Chris, thank you so much for joining me. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the 84 sales that I had today. Also, we're going to talk about Lewis. Shout out to Lewis in our Facebook group. He has a new inventory system. He's taken his business from 20,000 to 200,000. Great job. It's all down to the basics. You can see this looks actually very organized. Great job, Lewis, on cleaning up your space. There's nothing on the floor. Uh, everything is labeled. Looks amazing. And what are the basics? For those of you just stopping by the channel, I do about 500,000 a year on eBay. And um, these are the basics. Sourcing, sorting, grading, photography, listing, shipping, customer service, in your inventory system and your business setup. I'm gonna go over um, the 84 items that I just sold and give you guys an idea of just how common these are. And the only thing that I did differently is that I have a large store, so I have 11,000 items. Also, I'm doing above average. I wouldn't say my store is anywhere near perfect, to be honest, it's just an average store. But um, the pictures are a little bit better than average. Um, let's look at one of my items right here. Um, this sold for $12.47, $20 total. Um, my target goal for my store is actually $22. So I wouldn't say that my pictures are are that unusual let me know in the comment section below if you think uh, my pictures are special i don't think that they are um, i do edit my photos to make it look a little bit better um, that will increase your returns because this item looks like pretty decent in my photos and i don't know if you get it if it's going to be as good um, i do provide measurements i would say that my title is a and description is above average so I, I put a little more detail into my descriptions than other people i have free returns some people don't offer that I have $6.99 for shipping, so I'm not especially cheap on my items, um, but I just think that I do a little bit above average, a little bit more than your average seller, so I have a little bit higher average sales than your than your average seller. But as you can see through these brands, nothing in my store is, is you know Gucci. Uh, it's just common stuff. Once I switched to just selling common stuff and focused on process, my store got a lot bigger. I don't have to worry about Bolo alerts. I'm just essentially just trying to pick items that are in good condition. Never even heard of Juju, but I just post basically every single pair of denim because I'm still learning. Um, Bleaker, Mercer, Abercrombie, Kids. Kids is usually terrible. I don't pick up kids' jeans, usually unless they're, they're in like, like new condition. And you can see, of course, some of these items could be sold for more, right? I'm not claiming to sell all these items for maximum price. That's not even my model, honestly. If, if somebody makes a reasonable offer, I'm probably gonna accept it because I get these items for so cheap. So we have Calvin Klein. I didn't even spell Calvin Klein right. Okay, so, you know, keywords do matter, but if you fill out all the item specifics, you're gonna still get a sale. So let's take a look at this. Even though I, sold, I spelled Calvin Klein wrong, in the description, it shows Calvin Klein is the brand. So it's important that you guys fill out the item specifics. People always ask, how many item specifics do I need to fill out? Well, to be honest, as many as you can, right? Because somebody that clicks on men, straight, denim, cotton, regular, jeans, blue, 34-inch inseam, if you didn't click one of those item specifics, maybe you were ruled out in their search, right? Nothing special about this listing, minus the fact that, for me, 34-inch inseam sells pretty decently, right? And it's not like I got a ton of money for it, but it's definitely profitable. Just to give you guys an idea of the margins I'm looking for, I'm not gonna tell you my cost, but I'm aiming for a $22 average sales price in my store, um, and that gives me the profit margin that I am looking for. Um, so Tommy Hilfiger, again, for me, the larger sizes tend to sell a little bit faster, not necessarily for more money. Um, again, these items, you could charge a little bit more, um, but I, I'm, I'm not looking to, to really store my items and get maximum amount of money because the reason why I'm not looking for the maximum amount of money is because none of these items are rare. Uh, I mean, you guys could go to the thrift store right now and find, a, is it cache or cash? This sweater is, I feel like this sweater is is 25 cents at every single garage sale. There's nothing special about it. It sold for $14.99. That's, in my opinion, it's a home run for this. It's like, that's, I feel like that's all the money for that. Um, I have dress pants. Um, I have a sweater. A ca you know, a cashmere sweater maybe could sell for more, but again, it's replaceable. Where I live, Banana Republic is like oxygen. There's so much Banana Republic here. And Banana Republic, J. Crew, White House, Black Market. 
Um, it's not too hard that find, to find that stuff here. It's available on Dollar Day if you're thrifting. It's at every garage sale. It's just common stuff. As you can see here, I could sell this stuff for more, but again, it's replaceable. If if something is like over $30, I might, might wait for all the money. Um, Made well sells all right. Levi's, I sold the Patagonia Capilene. So I mean, for me, I'm just trying to move this stuff at a reasonable pace, which for me is 15% sell-through rate. Uh, what does that mean? I have, If I had 10,000 items, I would be hoping for 1,500 sales. Because I have 11,000 items, let's go back to my, I'll show you the performance tab. So some people, when they're sharing their store, make sure that they, they show their sales and their performance tab so you can get an idea of what they sell. So in the last... 30 days, let's see, actually, let's go to the traffic page. You can see I have 1,831 sales. So how would I calculate that? I'd go 1,831 divided by 11,000. So that's a 16.6% .6 sell-through rate, which is not that amazing. It's just normal. Out of 100 items, I would turn my, my inventory over probably every half year. So it's not extraordinarily fast. Um, the only thing in my store that's unusual for a store is just the size of it. It's just bigger. So if I look at the newly listed items, right, you can see that I probably listed 170 items today. So um, you look through here. One thing I notice when I'm looking through other people's stores during store reviews is how inconsistent it looks. My store looks pretty similar. Uh, you guys let me know in the comment section below. Does this look like a store? Does this look like somebody's house? Um, let me know if you think the pictures look fake. Um, here's an example. You guys know I run a fake, sa or a fake sale, so my items are marked up. This is a, a pair of current Elliott jeans. It's a 4486. It's going to be marked down. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of these pictures. So I take a picture of the whole item, the top half of the item, the bottom half of the item, the back of the item, back close up, back detail. I take a picture of the tag. I try to make the tag as, as, as straight as possible. And oftentimes I put my inventory tag inside this. So why do I do that? Because a lot of people actually think my photos are stock photos. So I don't mind having my finger or a sticker or a piece of dirt in the background so that at least they know that, you know, this is a real person. So I kind of want it to look like some dude's house, but I also want it to be, you know, professional looking. So let me know what you guys think if these pictures look, um, re I should probably remove my face from my eBay store, but I don't know. I just took this banner from my YouTube channel. If you guys are, if you guys are watching and enjoy this type of content, help me out. Gently caress that like button so other people can find this content. Helps the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. So um, as you can see here, my items are marked up and then they'll be marked down in uh, the promotions tab. So I'll show you guys that too. Um, you're just going to go in here, go to your hub, go to your performance tab. Or I'm sorry, uh, marketing tab, hit the promotions. Um, I have, you know, 22% fake sale. I have a combined shipping sale. So if you buy two or more items, you get nine, $9.99 shipping. And I have that as priority number one because I'd like people to spend to buy two items if they can. You can see I just I just posted this, you know, a month ago or so, and I've had eight hundred and thirty eight dollars in additional sales. Um, I'm constantly changing these to adjust it. Here I had a, a deal seven dollars off of an extra one hundred and ten dollars sale. I was trying to get people to spend up, and I got one sale. Somebody. Um, essentially actually th this doesn't count they, they just bought an item that was 142 dollars. so that didn't actually help somebody buy more than one item it was just an extra sale so that person got an extra seven bucks but maybe that encouraged them to buy at full price instead of making an offer um who knows but anyway work with your promotions you can check it out and see what happens see here i ran a sale on december 21st that um See, it didn't even work. I had $1,700 in sales that day, but zero of my promotions worked. So clearly I could be doing a better job with my promotions since they're not converting very well. Um, but this is just one of the tools that I use, obviously very poorly. So, you know, there's gonna be people on the internet that pretend like they know everything. I'll be the first to tell you, I barely know anything. Okay, e-commerce has a lot of stuff involved with it. Okay, so 
I'm going to scroll through my sales again to give you guys an idea of the um, combined shipping because I think I have one. So if you scroll through, let's see. All common stuff, nothing special. Because looking for special stuff was driving me crazy, so I'd rather just sell normal stuff at volume. Banana Republic, Express, Nike, Rosin Ali, Oakley, Gap, uh, Not Your Daughter's Jeans, Quicksilver, More Levi's, DKNY, Chris McLaughlin. I'm not even, I've never even heard of that. I just pick up dresses because I'm learning that category. Uh, Pendleton, Bill's Khakis, which sold for eight dollars maybe i won't pick that up next time uh boston traders see this is almost right on the money so i'm looking for 22 dollars average sale price i'm completely happy with that um and this is this is exactly the type of sale i'm looking for i want a hundred of those a day so i'm almost there i think i can get there probably by the summertime i uh, just gotta just gotta bulk up my store here we go so here we go these american eagle jeans sold two for twenty eight dollars and fifty eight cents so <clears throat> didn't quite get the twenty two dollars that i'm looking for but it's fine because again american eagle where i live is a dime a dozen you can get them everywhere and this person took advantage of the buy two 9.99 shipping and promotion so again it's going to depend on your model obviously some people don't want to sell items for cheap prices they want to home run every single customer but i just feel like right now in our country that's not how it works you know, people are not working. People are maybe struggling. I'd rather sell in this low cost category and sell a hundred items a day. So, you know, a hundred times twenty-two dollars is where I want to be towards the middle of the year, and hopefully, I can keep bulking that up. I actually have the capacity right now to list three hundred and twenty items a day. I'm, you know, I, I got close. I've listed over two hundred items a couple of times as far as my personal record. I over two hundred. But I'm nowhere near the efficiency um, of 320, which is what I think I could do. So I don't have any employees. I have contractors. So the way that that works is I, I give them a 1099, um, and they report taxes on their own income, and they don't use any of my own equipment, and I can't dictate their schedule. Okay, so it's a little bit funky. They have to come whenever they feel like it using their phone, take the pictures, and then they airdrop the photos to me, and then I pay them. So it's not the best scenario. If I really wanted to bulk my sales up, I would probably have to get a real employee because that way, when that happens, you get a lot more consistency when somebody actually works for you. So, you know, it's tough working with just contractors and I, I got to really bite the bullet and just, you know, get get a real employee. So, Chaps, more American Eagle, and Taylor. Um, I, I am moving out of the shoe game because they're just harder for me to find. Um, I can find some shoes. I can I can find enough shoes to make a six-figure income, but I'm looking to make, I want a 365K a year income. So to get the 365K, it's a lot of shoes, and I just it's just difficult. I literally bought a pallet of Nikes. Um, actually, I'm sorry, multiple pallets of Nikes. I bought 2,100 pairs of Nikes, and not one pair was resellable. They were all too thrashed. Just the soles worn down, the, and that just basically kind of killed shoes for me because I can find um, 100 to 300 shoes a week, but I want thousands, and it's very hard to do that with with the shoe game, right, at least for me. For some people, it's super easy, but I'm I'm not. Maybe I gave up too early. I gave up before I struck gold in the shoe category. It's just that I mean, look at this: seven seven jeans, Lucky Brand. Old Navy, Columbia, Levi's, Torrid, Jessica Simpson. See, Merrill, this obviously is a better pair of shoes. This sold for $59, right? So I could actually sell these for a tiny bit more. I could sell them for around $69 to $79. It's, a, it's an out-of-stock shoe, uh, very popular. But again, I'm not in a storage business, and I have nine of them. So, you know, of I'm not just doing one method, and I think that it's really slowed me down. So if you guys are trying to take notes during this, write down, man, this guy is scatterbrained. That's probably the notes that you should be taking because there's so many different categories in my store, right? I'm selling all kinds of different things. But as I narrow down, getting to that next level, I really just need to cut, get cut down to two or three categories to focus on. Um, here's another pair of um, ballet flats. New York and Company, I know, according to Matt, 
Shout out to Junkyard Dog. He says that New York and company Soho sells well. Uh, I see those bouncing around, but here's just a regular New York and company that sold for $15.99. Um, Levi's is pretty flooded, but then there are certain Levi's that sell super well, like Levi's 560, Levi's 550, um, plus size Levi's, Express, Rustler. Here's a DVF, which is obviously a heavy hitter brand. Um, but I've had this for a long time. So I decided to just take an offer of $12.99 for the item. You win some, you lose some. So, you know, not everything can be a home run. I think this could have maybe sold for twice that, but it, it didn't sell for a long time. So I just wanted to get rid of it. Um, loved. And, it, and again, at $12.99 plus shipping, I actually am still profitable on the item. So it's not like I'm losing money. Um, not going to give you my break even because then it would tell you what my cost of goods is, but it's very low. Um, Love 21, Echo, and you can see here, um, I have someone that helps me with shipping and she marked not in stock, which, which is a problem. So um, that means towards the end of the day today, we we're already starting to pack for tomorrow and um, the shoe is not in stock. So I have to message the customer. I'll show you guys how I do that. So I contact the buyer. And if you guys don't know, you should be using text shortcuts. So here's my text shortcut that's already written out. I'm very sorry about the inconvenience. I cannot find these shoes. Do you want to look for something else or be issued an immediate refund? I apologize for this. The reason why I do this is because I'm trying to avoid the defect, right? I want the customer to say, I want a refund because you lost my shoes. Then I can cancel because they requested and I don't get the ding. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I lose items. I wish I, I was perfect and I never lost anything, but in my store, I'm not organized enough to never, never lose anything. So we got another sale during this video. Um, I have disabled all of the cha-chings on my phone because, uh, it's distracting. Um, so again, here's another Calvin Klein suit sold for 1247. I would do that all day long. You know, honestly, it's like, a Calvin Klein suit is so common to me. It's not special at all. Yes, you could sell it for more money, but there's they're like a dime a dozen. So also, um, like I don't know if you guys think these photos are overkill or they're not good enough. We try to take the best photos that we can. I do edit them. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But honestly, this is ridiculously common where I live. Um, also, I don't know who is buying this because who is going to work right now? So again, it's not our job to figure out why people buy things. It's just our job to get things up for sale. And I hope this surprises you guys at how common the stuff is in my store. Cause people are like, I can't find any amazing brands where I live. Well, I don't think any of these are amazing brands to be honest. Um, yes, I do have some home runs. I'd say, you know, every day I sell something that's expensive. Um, but you know, sometimes it's just, you know, bread and butter all day long. So I appreciate you guys. Um, if you guys want to join us, my Facebook group with Tech and Sports has 251 members now. You can join at patreon.com slash the resellers podcast. And it's the link is in the description below. We have a lot of coaching and a lot of new coaches coming up coming up. For 35 bucks a month, you get all of those coaches included. And we're about to launch an Amazon one. So a lot of people have been asking for Amazon help. We're gonna bring in Jack Weaver. He's at Video Game Sourcing on Instagram. He's gonna be on on Fridays to give you guys uh, helpful tips on how to do Amazon. So I'm really excited for, for that to happen. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.